And there it is. Can you see that beautiful green screen? Yep. Okay, awesome. Okay. So I just figured this was a this would be a good way to um, impart a whole bunch of information to you at once. Um, because SCW is such a big part of the MFA experience in particular, but I am going to be talking about um, the different variations of SCW for the different populations because it's a little bit um, varied. And um, I'm going to like sort of run through this information in the PowerPoint, and then I'm going to leave. Just we can ask you can ask me questions after that if I've if I've missed something. Um, oh, hi Zoe Anderson, I see you there too. Okay, all right. So um, the first whoops, the first important thing to note is the date. And the place. This is happening June 9th through the 19th this summer um, up at Chatham's Eden Hall campus. So for those of you low residency students who are maybe not familiar, this is not in Pittsburgh proper. Okay, this is our, our campus is in Shadyside in, in Pittsburgh, but Eden Hall is Chatham's northern campus and it is in a town called Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. I should have put that on the slide, but I didn't. Um, but I will send out more information, lots more information as we um, get closer. So it is in this um, Eden Hall. I'll just pause for a minute and, and tell you about it. It is a beautiful pastoral place. It is um, a vast tract of land that was gifted to Chatham Oh, 2003, two, somewhere five, I don't know, somewhere back then. Um, and with the idea that it would become, um, that we would invest in it and it would become a sustainable campus. And it is that it is exactly that now. So um, it used to be that we would take students up to Eden Hall for one day of the summer community of writers, um, because for a long time, there was no place to stay up there. And that changed in 2016. Um, and that was the year that we we decided to take full advantage. So what is SCW? So Summer Community Writers, we call it SCW, that's the acronym. Um, and it is a 10 day immersive intensive course that is required of all MFA students. So it is called English 710, that's what you registered for. Six credits um, is the club course, the version that's taken twice by all of our low res students and once by all of our full res students. There is also a version English 709 is three credits, and that is a course that can be used as an elective for MFA students. So if you really wanted to come, like full res students, if you really wanted to come back a second year and you had elective space, you would talk to your advisor or, or me about that, and we could see about fitting that into your, um, into your program. English 310 is a three credit undergraduate course, um, and it's typically taken by upper level BFA or IDP students. And I think we have um, some folks in here who fit that bill. Um, so, uh, before we even go, keep going, what about COVID? So just again, to uh, make this very clear, SEW will be a fully on ground experience for students. I'm not going to be running um, virtual workshops. Um, we will have potentially some guests who will appear virtually, um, but this, the workshops and all the students will be present on campus. So you should think about that if for, there's some reason, if for some reason you are not comfortable with that. Um, and of course, you know, th if things change, we may make different choices, but it looks like things are stable. They say the way that they are. Um, we'll stay on campus. But if you don't feel like you can do that, um, I will never judge you for that, but you should think about not enrolling this semester or this summer and taking it, you know, taking a gamble, um, rolling the dice and hoping that maybe things are more comfortable for you next summer. Um, we will of course be following all of Chatham's COVID protocols, whatever they may be come June 9th. I imagine they will be so similar to what they are now, proof of vaccination or a waiver. Um, of what vaccination waiver um, and likely masking. We'll see. Last summer, we were up at Eden Hall. Um, we had a sort of hybrid experience last summer and right in the middle of SCW, Chatham lifted its, ma its mask mandate for indoors. So we had a, a, like a lovely five days of mask-free um, interaction. So I don't, I hope we get that. I will see. Okay. Um, I have a bulldog next to me who makes really disgusting sounds when he snores. So I'm sorry about that if you hear him. Okay. So this is a course. Um, I'm gonna talk about the course part of it first um, to make sure that, that I emphasize that it is a class that you're getting credits for. So what is, what's required? So if you are taking English 710, you are required to do the following. You must attend all 
events for the full 10 day residency. There's a, I'll talk about exceptions to that in a minute. Follow the specific expectations for your workshop. Complete pre-residency reading of at least two books by faculty members, uh, visiting faculty members, plus post some forums, uh, forum responses in a bright space um, course. Um, you will maintain a journal for the entirety of the residency. Um, you'll get more information about the journal, the specifics of all of this with your syllabus later in the semester. Um, but typically it is you write a page a day for this thing um, and it can be reflective and it can also be generative um, and, uh, and, and potentially a mix of both. You will all conduct yourselves with um, the a spirit of generative community. Um, and then you will complete a post-residency evaluation. Okay, if you are taking either English 709 or English 310, you are only required, only required to participate in the daily workshops. And the workshops are two and a half hours long and there are eight days of them. Okay, so there are eight of these. So that your requirement is to participate fully in that workshop following all the stated expectations of your workshop leader, um, but, you are welcome and encouraged to participate in everything. I just won't be looking for a journal from you. Um, I won't be asking you to, um, I won't be requiring you to attend any of the, um, the co-curricular stuff. So you will still complete pre-residency reading. You will still con conduct yourself uh, in a spirit of generative community. Um, and there is still the post-residency evaluation for you as well, which is super helpful for me. Um, every year I gather all this information and I read it and I try to make it better for everybody the next year. So um, we will take that real seriously. Okay, who's teaching at this thing? Um, we have the way that this works um, is we invite every summer, we invite um, really wonderful writers and educators from all around the country who are not specifically Chatham uh, faculty. So this summer we are bringing back the wonderful, wonderful Ira Sukrungrung, who is a Thai American writer of all three genres. This guy publishes in fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. He teaches at Kenyon College. Um, he has been uh, with us before at SCW. He is a marvelous soul. So he's going to come and do the multi-genre fiction and nonfiction workshop. And he's also delivering our keynote speech this year. Uh, Adriana Iramirez is um, a Pittsburgh writer who many of you got, uh, you know, intersected with during our dialogues um, last week, two weeks ago, whenever that was. Um, she is a powerhouse. You probably got a little sense of this when uh, when she was when you were watching her. Um, super dynamic, super excited. She's going to be a lot of fun, I think, and she's going to teach um, a multi-genre poetry and nonfiction workshop. So already you know that if you are a fiction student, you'll be in Ira's workshop. If you are a poetry student, you'll be with Adriana. And if you are a creative nonfiction, we will figure out where you go. <laughs> we will. Um, you will, I'll, 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 you know, invite you to, to choose your workshop, but with the understanding that because I will, I need to balance those classes out in terms of numbers, there may be some shifting around, but we'll see how that works out. Maybe not. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, you're in a two and a half hour workshop with these folks every day of the residency, with the exception of two days. Um, and then we have a whole host of other people that we bring in for craft lectures and publishing discussions and all sorts of other things. And I'm building that, um, that list right now. And I will be announcing those folks um, little by little as, as, they, as they sign on with us. Okay, so what else will we do at SCW? Your mornings um, will be breakfast followed by open writing time. And that is designed, I want you to think of that time as kind of a writing retreat. It is a beautiful space. It is a perfect place to be um, in residence as a writer. So that is the time where I hope that you will, you know, um, spend on your, on the work that you're doing for your workshops, um, for um, generating in your journal, other kinds of things like that. So there's a big, up until about 11 o'clock in the morning, that those hours are for you to do what you need with them, okay? Um, followed immediately by, uh, depending on the day, it could be a craft lecture on some element of creative writing craft, such as metaphor or, um, you know, setting or world building. Um, could be a publishing discussion, which means maybe we bring in an agent who's gonna talk to you about how to write a query letter for your novel to approach an agent 
or a publisher. It could be someone coming to talk about small press publishing. Um, could be someone just talking about how to submit to literary journals in the first place. Often that person is me. Um, we also schedule brown bag talks over the lunch hour um, for, uh, in various kinds of um, topics. Uh, last year, I'm trying to think now what they were. One was about what is a writing residency and how do I get one? We've done them on grants. We've done it on them on freelance opportunities. So the idea is that you'll sit and have lunch with someone who is, you know, an expert in that area, and they will just kind of informally, you know, give you some tips and, and be there to answer questions for you. Okay. In the afternoon, we have lunch and then your formal workshop um, happens then and then there, there are also there's also time for your faculty conferences so each of you in your workshop will get a 30 minute um, one on one conference with your workshop leader. Um, and that time can be used um, in a variety of ways, you can use that time to talk about the work you're generating for their workshop. Um, or depending on when your your conference falls during the residency it might feel. You might not feel like you have a lot to talk about if it's very early in the residency. So you might use that time to talk about just sort of general writing questions or, um, you know, they're working writers. So like, do you have questions about what it means to be a working writer? Um, and they are, you should think of them as um, people, resources for you uh, throughout the whole 10 days. And I would really encourage you to be um, friendly and not shy. Um, I'll help you, I promise. Um, they're very nice people. They probably also feel a little bit shy. Maybe not Adriana. I don't think she's shy. But um, but that's what we're all there for is to, you know, hook, hook up, hook our, you know, brains together. And I almost said hook up. That's not what I meant. Um, and, uh, and learn from each other. Um, and, and often really uh, valuable connections happen between students and faculty, also between students and students. Okay. Evenings, we have dinner, and then almost every night there is some kind of something. Um, it could be a faculty reading. All of our, our guests, fac our major guest faculty, the core faculty members will, will give a reading. Um, there will be an, at least one open mic for you all. Um, I actually usually ask the Whitford Fellow to run that thing. Um, and that is probably one of the, the most fun nights at SCW, and you can imagine why. I mean, that's just because um, it's like a supercharged word circus. It's out in the barn which is a lot of fun. I haven't talked about the barn yet, but um, it's great. Um, we might do a submission party or a group writing session where we just all gather in the dining hall and you know, maybe somebody throws out some prompts um, or maybe somebody throws out some literary journals to check out and we just do our work together. I think there's a lot of um, uh, really, it's uh, for me anyway, as a writer, I get a lot out of writing in, in, you know, in community with, some, with other people, even if it's quiet. Um, okay, bonfires. We do have a fire pit at our disposal up there. We can we can get we can get wood. We can get marshmallows, that kind of stuff. There, if you have not been to Eden Hall yet, there is a bowling alley at Eden Hall in the lodge. Um, let me pause here for a second and try to describe the campus to you if you haven't been there. So, when the, when the campus was was donated to Chatham, it was um, a mid century. It was only on one side of the road. This very old fashioned mid century lodge which was originally a retreat space for the women who worked in the Heinz factory in Pittsburgh. So the Heinz folks would bust these women, these very hardworking women up to Gibsonia, to Eden Hall, where they could have some R&R. &R. And it's this really beautiful space. You'll feel like you walked into 1957 or 62 or something. It's all still very mid-century. Um, I'm just gonna tell you right now, there is a pool there that we cannot use and it breaks my heart to have to tell you that, but I don't want you to like happen upon it and be like, why didn't you tell us? Um, it is a really, really, it's beautiful. Uh, it's really old and it's in disrepair and we have not been able to use it in many years. So just putting that out there. Um, but there is a bowling alley in the basement of that of that building. It is this crazy, you know, with the little, little pins and little bowls. So you can use that. Um, there is a there is a weight room. There is um, maybe I, maybe there's another slide where I talk about all that other stuff, the other amenities. Um, but you're just gonna you're gonna hang out. You'll also be probably tired <laughs> at the end of the day because um, these are long days. These days, you know, if you imagine that they start at breakfast, you know, like seven thirty or eight, and they go till about seven thirty or eight at night. So eat your wheaties. Okay, um, let's see. That sounds intense. Will we get any rest? Yes, 
you will, I always build in one day off, um, which means that you have one activity in the morning, not a workshop. There are no workshops on the off day. Um, and then the afternoon and the evening is left unprogrammed. So, uh, and I also try to build in a few free nights as well, where you, um, you don't have to attend a reading or something like that. Um, the off day, uh, the activities are something that's outside of what we've been doing normally during the week. So um, this is all still being planned, but for instance, one year we had um, a tarot writing workshop with Brittany Haler, who was an alum of the program. One year we had a sourdough baking and writing workshop. Um, we've had nature hikes, Joe, that's not just Joe's like that, yeah. Um, maybe after you graduate, Joe, you'll come back and teach that one for us. Um, what else have we had? Uh, we had one, one year we had a, a low residency student whose family owned a gymnastics studio up the road. So she took everybody to the gymnastics studio and like let them jump into the ball pits and climb on stuff. And so I try to, you know, I try to give like, maybe there's an inside activity and an outside activity because not everybody wants to go outside. So, okay. Do I really have to do all the things? Yes. If you are taking 710, you have to do all the things. Okay. Yes, it is intense. I just want you to get yourself into a mindset for that. You are going to be tired. Um, and that is by design. Um, you will get a lot, you will get, we'll get to that in a minute. It's kind of a magical time, I think. But what if I have to miss for a good reason? So this is important to think about. If you miss a workshop or a required activity, you have to come talk to me. You have to talk to your workshop leader if you've missed a workshop. That's really, really important. Um, and depending on the reason, that will tell us how to proceed. So understand that if you um, if you miss too much of SCW, you can fail it. It is it's a pass fail course, and um, it is six credits of your degree. So it is, I take it seriously. Um, if something happens, a good reason, for instance. You have an illness, you get sick, you get COVID, you get something else, you go, to, I hope that doesn't happen. Or someone in your, you know, you're a very close family um, has, an, has an emergency of that, of that nature. Of course, that's a good reason. If you have a, a, a religious observance, that's also a good reason. I can work with you in those cases. Um, if there's something that you've missed, I, we can create potentially another assignment. Um, but I want you to be aware of that, that if you miss especially workshop, one workshop is probably not going to sink you. Two workshops, and we're already on thin ice. Okay, three wor workshops, and I don't know how we can make that up. So if it's the if it's the kind of thing where you miss two workshops and you still want you don't want to withdraw from the course, you want to continue it, you might be looking at doing more work after the residency ends in the form of papers to write. It would be it would be the sort of thing where I would have to in conference with your workshop leader come up with a plan um, for something that would feel, you know, weighty and substantial enough to kind of stand in. But that is a very, very um, rare thing that happens at SCW. So I just need to put that out front so everyone hears that. Bad reasons that do not get special disp disposition is, well, that's when my, I already booked my vacation, so I can't. Well, if that's how, if you have a vacation booked, good for you. You'll take an SCW next year in 2023. Um, same, you have a wedding to go to. Okay, that's fine. Um, you overslept your workshop. It happens. Set your alarm. You didn't feel like going to something. Not gonna fly. Not gonna fly. Okay. Um, I am. I am always available. I am there the whole time with you. I sit in the EBC, which is the Esther Barazzoni Center. That is the place where most of this programming happens. That's where the dining hall is. And I will sit there at my command station and you can find me pretty much any hour of the day. So if anything comes up um, that you are worried about, um, you're concerned about making something on time, whatever, you come and talk to me, okay? Um, okay, where will we stay? There are three options for lodging during SCW. The most, uh, the most popular one, uh, the one I recommend is a single dorm room, most with a shared hallway bathroom in Orchard Hall. This is what you pay $250 for. It covers all 10 nights. That's way cheaper than a hotel. Um, and again, it is a single dorm room, so you're not sharing with a roommate, though there is a shared hallway situation. Um, 
that's a great plan. I mean, that's one of the best things about Eden Hall and the facilities up there for our program is that we can all stay together and have that. It's sort of like a, you know, camp experience. Um, so we stay. Speaking of camping, if you prefer, they allow us, and I don't know why they allow us, to be honest, every year I'm waiting for them to be like, oh, that's a liability. We can't do that. But they keep letting us. So if you want to pitch your own tent outside of Orchard Hall, we have always a couple students every year who want to do that, save some money. That is free. You can just do that yourself. And if you do that, you will we'll give you um, access to the dorm bathrooms so you have those facilities. Um, and there'll be some storage opportunities, I think storage areas that you can you can put stuff as well. Um, one year we had a student, a camper, who decided he wasn't going to bring a tent. And he was just going to string a hammock between the trees. <laughs> so you know what happened, right? It poured rain on like the second day. Absolutely everything he brought got completely drenched. And he had to spend the next nine days like walking around damp. So bring a tent. Um, because we are still in the COVID times, I have relaxed my requirement. It used to be a requirement that everyone stay at Eden Hall. But again, because of COVID, um, I'm, I'm easing up on that. And if you are someone who is local to Pittsburgh or even someone who lives up at Eden Hall and you would prefer to commute, you can do that. But it, again, it's a, a matter of making sure that you're there on time um, if, you know, and you don't miss any of the programming. Okay. Let's move to the next slide. Uh, oh, I said this already. Hmm. Sorry, keep going. Um, where and what will we eat? So most meals are gonna take place in the dining hall. There are a few program catered events. We always have a welcome dinner on the first night and a closing dinner, a barbecue usually on the last night. Um, it's a dining hall. It has a line, you know, just like any dining hall does. Um, it has hot breakfasts, lunches, and dinners that are available at certain, you know, hours. Um, if you have a special diet, they are really good about accommodation. I just need to know ahead of time. And I'll be sending out an email um, to everybody who's enrolled soon asking you for that information so that I can let the, the folks up there, the, the chefs know um, way ahead of time so that they can make sure that if they have any questions, they can contact you and you can work with them. Um, this is the this is the fee that you were charged at enrollment. It's was it's two hundred and sixty five dollars, which covers all of your meals except for one dinner on the day off. So on the on the off day, we have breakfast and we have lunch, but the dinner the dining hall is closed for dinner, and that's the day when you all go off and do what you're going to do. Um, lots of people go home to Pittsburgh. Um, you're on your own for that day. What is the twenty five dollar program fee for? Um, so that's another. Um, Thing that was charged with your enrollment. These are funds that we use to purchase supplies for some of the workshops and other sessions. Um, you know, uh, if there was a, I don't know, um, basket weaving session, there isn't, but if there was and we needed to get some basket weaving supplies for you, um, we would use the, 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 the fee for that. Um, also, there are oftentimes when students want, they decide that they want to have something or do something that we don't have. Um, one year they wanted to buy, you know, frisbees and, you know, outdoor sports equipment and games. I don't remember exactly what it was, but this is the kind of, this is the fund that helps us do that stuff sort of spontaneously during the program. Um, one thing I have in mind for this year, um, there is a, a, a place up near Eden Hall called North Park which has kayak rentals and also has one of those crazy ropes courses I think it's called Go Ape. I have done one of these. I will tell you that story some other time. It is hilarious and embarrassing. But um, if if you wanted, if a group of you wanted to go do that, I would use that money to pay for the tickets. That sort of thing. I just want to be really transparent about what that is because I know um, that your money is important to you. I get that. So what is there to do at Eden Hall? There are hikes. It is beautiful up there. There are hiking trails, um, jogging trails. Lots of nature. You can go bowling. You can hang out in the barn. So the barn is this barn <laughs> um, up there. It's, a, it's an actual barn, but it is really beautiful. It has a stage. There are, you know, white lights strung um, on the ceilings. Um, there's a, a balcony that they've actually built, um, which is very good because a couple of years ago before the balcony was built, there were these really, really tall um, ladders that one of our students climbed and wasn't supposed to climb. So don't climb any ladders. Um, you can play pool, you can work out. There is a workout uh, room at Eden Hall in the 
um, and the EBC, Esther Barazani Center, will say, you'll hear me say SCW and EBC. EBC is where SCW takes place, basically. Um, you can sit in the orchard. There's an orchard. You can sit in the amphitheater. I didn't mention that. It's an outdoor amphitheater. Watch the sunset. The sunsets up there are ridiculously beautiful. Um, you can have a bonfire. Oh, and also you can write. <laughs> That's what you're there to do. You're there to write. Okay. Um, syllabus and schedule. I, I will have your syllabus to you um, by late March or early April. Um, and it will just sort of outline a lot of what I've already said about what you are required to do, but it'll include, for instance, um, it will include the books, the pre-residency books that you need to read and what you need to do with those. And it will also include any reading um, or materials that your workshop leaders want to assign to you. Um, and I should pause here and say, and I will say this to the workshop leaders too, that we do everything we can to not print at Eden Hall, not use paper because for a bunch of reasons. Okay, so partly COVID, we've been asked not to print during COVID times, but also, um, you know, we're a sustainable campus. So we're trying to, you know, limit that. Um, it's also a pain in the neck to print at Eden Hall because there's not that many printers and there are too many of you. So we try to um, do a lot, most of the work digitally up there. So just be aware of that. And uh, again, I will re-emphasize this with the, with the workshop shop instructors. Um, I will send you a, probably send you a scheduled draft at the same time as the syllabus, just to sort of give you a, uh, a general sense of, of what your days will look like. Um, and then a final schedule will be waiting for you when you arrive um, at check-in. Um, whether you're staying in the dorm or commuting, you'll get a packet, a purple Chatham folder. It'll have all sorts of um, information in it for you. There'll be a lanyard with a you know, name card and um, probably a water bottle, something like that. Um, from this point on until June, you will get, I don't know how many emails from me, a bunch. Please read all of them all the way through. They will be dense, but they will hopefully be clear and comprehensive. I try really hard to make sure that I um, anticipate questions and get, just get the information to you. So, um, and if, if there's ever anything that isn't clear, you know how to find me. I heard that there was a final reading and a dance. Yes. Uh, all second year, <laughs> face, all second year low res students um, give their graduating reading at SCW, just like the full res students give it on campus in May. Um, and then we will celebrate with a space prom or a golf ball or a lip sync battle or karaoke. These are all things that have happened in the past, by the way. Um, the point is, it's something that you as students figure out. You decide what you want to do to celebrate the close of SCW. You talk with the Whitford Fellows, and then you all come to me and say, Sheila, we need 100 bucks to go make this happen. And that's that's another way that we use the money that that you use for the that you that you give us for the program fee, um, within reason, obviously. Um, okay. What is the closing keynote? Stu closing student keynote, and who gives it? So this is a new um, this is a new thing that we started last year. Um, so we open SCW with a keynote by our one of our visiting faculty members, and it. Um, it has the effect of kind of setting the tone for the whole 10 days and kicking off the event. Last year, we began um, doing, I think, what will become, I hope, a tradition as we go forward. And we have a closing keynote given by one of you. Um, it will be a shorter talk. It will not be an hour long. It will be 30, 20 to 30 minutes um, on a subject of relevance to the MFA student community, to writing community, to the writing life. It really dot, dot, dot means I'm open to ideas. Um, it will happen on the last night of the residency, and um, this is my call to you. If you would like to be considered for this honor, please send a proposal of no more than 500 words to me by email, just telling me what your idea is. What would you like to talk about? What would you like? And it's hard, I know. It's like, that's June. I can't think that far ahead. But if you want $250 from me um, and the opportunity to stand in front of a group of your peers um, and faculty and, um, and do this really important professionalizing um, thing, then send me a proposal by April, by April 1st, <coughs> and I will, um, I will let you all know, let's say by May 1st, who gets that, that honor, probably way before May 1st, okay? Um, for those of you who are um, uh, undergraduates, unfortunately, this, isn't, this is a graduate only opportunity, um, but uh, maybe you'll become a graduate student at some point. That would be nice too. Okay, 
So what is special about this class? I think this class is really special. I tell everyone, and I mean this absolutely truthfully, that it is the, my favorite thing that I get to do at Chatham. I was hired to do this. This is the thing that they brought me in to do, to create. And I've been doing this since 2013. And um, I don't get sick of it. I'm not sick of it yet. I love it. So it is an intensive um, and immersive. Um, it is so beautiful at Eden Hall that those two things um, kind of together that really like in the pressure cooker that you'll feel, but also surrounded by all this beauty and all these wonderful people and all this stimulus is going to be this amazing um, recipe for incredible creativity while you are there. Um, it's also really important to me as program director um, that you get to work with some folks who are not me, who are not Mark and Heather and Leah. I mean, we're all wonderful and we all love you, but we want you to get as, as many per, you know, professional connections as you can and as many eyeballs on your work as possible. So um, that is one of the wonderful things about SCW. Um, you're gonna write a ton, like way more than you think you can write. Um, you'll probably write some of it deliriously and not remember writing it. Um, but you will also make friends and lots of memories. Um, I, I will just, I'll brag a little and I'll say that every year, practically every year, I get comments in the evaluations that say that SCW was the favorite thing that someone did in the Chatham MFA program. You know, I'm sure other people have other favorites, but enough of you say that this is your favorite that I can, I feel like I can use that as advertisement. Um, okay. All right. So this is the point where I'm going to stop the share and open up for questions. Um, hi to people I didn't say. Hi, Malcolm, everybody. Um, hi, Brecken. So um, Joe, first I'm gonna ask Joe Bashotti, did I miss any major thing? Um, I'm trying to think now. Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think did, you might've touched on um, how some of these smaller workshop style bits will be scattered throughout, right? Yeah, I mean, these are the, I call them craft lectures. They're not all craft lectures. They're, that's just a placeholder term for the late morning things that happen um, that are usually about 45 minutes long um, with maybe some 10 minutes for, for Q&A. Um, and they can, like I said, they can range from things that are very kind of high-minded and academic to things that are much more um, practical. You might be doing prompt work. You might be um, just talking about, you know, like I said before, agent, you know, how to, how to get an agent, that kind of stuff. Um, there aren't, there, there are no like um, requirements attached to those courses, those parts of the course. Um, like there's no homework from those craft classes. Okay, they're just like you come and you absorb that thing. Okay. All right, what questions do you all have? Malcolm, I have, a, I have oh, a question. Oh, sorry, sorry, Malcolm That's okay. Amber. Um, I am curious as to like to what extent um, partners or family or pets may or may not be allowed to be involved. Um, okay, so your partners are welcome to visit. Um, unfortunately, we cannot house them. Um, your your pets are a, are a different kind of situation. Um, it actually, as long as it hasn't changed, I learned recently that the Eden Hall dorm is actually a pet friendly space uh, at Chatham and you can bring your dog or cat. I don't know about the cat part, um, but if you are one of those, if you are a person who is thinking about doing that, we should talk. Let's just make sure that that's the case. Um, partners and families often come up. Mine do, for instance, always at the last, on the last day. Um, you know, we, we just don't have, uh, we don't have room to, to put them up during the residency. Does that answer is that also, welcome? yeah, but is, is that also true if you camp, like if we camp and we have oh. a two or four person tent? Oh, um, I'm, you're camping. That's fine. I mean, okay. the only thing I would say to you is this is, I mean, ask yourself if that's the best way to immerse yourself in, in 10 days of writing to have, I mean, for me, if my kids were with me, <laughs> I would get nothing done. You know, I yeah. would not be able to focus. It is one of the really <laughs> wonderful things about SCW is that you are, you know, and this is why I took us away from Pittsburgh where we all live and our bills come in, right? So we're up there and it's just this like, it's a little bit of a bubble. Um, 
so that's up to you, Malcolm. I mean, certainly I'm sure we have had um, folks bring up their partners, their families intents, but um, just understand that your priority while you're there, of course, you know this, Malcolm, yeah. is, to, is to be the student and do the student work. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Amber. Uh, if we decide to stay at the dorm, when will the fee for that be due? <clears throat> so what I was after this uh, session and after I send this session out to everybody who missed the session, um, I will send an email asking you all to tell me what you'd like to do. Um, and I don't know, Joe, is there a, do we have a deadline for letting them know? Um, I said in March, uh, I told student accounts, we'll have a better idea of who is planning okay. to stay in the dorms. Yeah, um, we, the reason is because we want to make sure that they need to know how big our group is for the dorms. Um, and I, oh, I let me pause here too and say that the dorm rooms are, they provide, there's a single bed. Uh, I think it's actually a, like a twin long, you know. Um, it does not, you have to bring your own sheets. You have to bring your own towels. Um, you don't have to bring your own toilet paper. You do have to bring your own shampoo. Um, I strongly, strongly recommend bringing a mattress pad. The beds are not comfortable. If you've ever slept on one of them, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they really, they, they need a mattress pad. Um, I've, and I say this to Chatham every single year um, that they need to do something about the, about the mattresses because they're terrible. Um, so probably by the end of March, I would think Amber at the latest, we would need to know. Um, does that make sense? Okay. Other questions? Oh, I see chat stuff. Let me see if I missed anything. Ah. Uh, Joe is excited to go. Oh yeah, coffee and pastries in the afternoon. So we're writers and I need coffee in the afternoon. So I make sure that there's coffee every afternoon um, that, is, that is free and open for you to, to just, you know, it's part of your, of, your, of your dining package that you've paid for. Um, and I'll get more granular details about, you know, how to, how to deal with, how to do the dining hall thing um, as we get closer. There are other details that are just, it's just too, specific to share today unless you have specific questions about them um i think brandon's raising his hand brandon go ahead hey sheila this this might be one of the uh, uh questions you were just referring to but um i plan on actually driving up from denton to gibsonia okay um you know i figure that'll give me some good uh uh, material along the way plus I have extended family in Tennessee and stuff like that okay um and so I guess uh, I was just wondering about uh the parking situation on mm -hmm. the Eden Hall campus yeah so um yes there is ample parking there is a, a lot um across from the dorm um that is free so you just park your car there Gibsonia is very quiet it is rural um you know, it's, it's, we're, you're not going to have to worry about, about the car being messed with, I think. Um, everybody meet Brandon. He is joining the MFA program this summer as a low residency student. Brandon, this is some folks. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So Zoe uh, is also a low residency student and Joe and Malcolm and Amber are full residency students and um, and Brecken and Finley and Kasarian are undergraduate students uh, at Chatham who are going to be okay. with us. Yeah. So this is not the whole group. Um, I think we have, I'm expecting ooh, 15, 16 people, Joe, something like that, I think. I think so, yeah. Something like that. You're a sm you'll be a small group this year. We have had upwards of 40. Um, depending on the number of students. We also used to, um, in the before times, <laughs> um, we used to open up um, SCW to community members because Pittsburgh has a really thriving writing community just in general. Um, and also often um, our alums come back. We have not done that for the last couple of years just because of COVID, but um, so we're, it's a smaller, more intimate group, um, but we still have a, a grand time. What other questions? Amber, and then, oh, Zoe first, and then Amber. Um, if we were thinking about commuting up there, I can't remember last year, was there any like programming over breakfast? Like, do we need to be there for breakfast and then no. spend our free writing time there or just 
drive up to be there. You don't need to. I, what I do in the morning, I, there's always a morning announcements, um, Mm -hmm. that I'll just, it's just me speaking into a microphone in in the, in the dining hall, just reminding you of things. And I'll be reminding you of things all the time while we're up there. Um, so no, you don't have to be there for that. Joe always sends out the morning announcements through email too. Um, so, uh, but I would, what I would caution again for commuters, don't lose those hours. It's real easy to stay home and lose those hours of writing. Whereas if you get in the car at 7.30 and you get up here for breakfast, then that at least gives you more of that sense of, um, you know, of, of being in the residency. Um, but I also understand that, you know, traffic and all that kind of stuff. So there is an Eden Hall shuttle um, that runs infrequently and erratically in the summertime. So I would, unless you are, unless you are someone who absolutely does not know how you're going to get around and thinks you need the shuttle for some parts of the residency, come and talk to me to make sure that we have somebody there because we've had not great experience with, with the shuttle drivers in the summer because there aren't enough students up there to, you know, um, for them to be constantly running their routes. So like that. Kasarian and Finley, do you, either of you have any questions about your version of this? No. Well, I like, I know, um, I was curious, is there a shuttle that will take you from main campus there on the 9th and bring you back on the 19th? We can arrange for that for sure. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's easy to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, aside from that. No, I think I think I'm all set. I've actually okay. lived on Eden Hall campus before. Oh, so you know. <laughs> yeah, so I know all about it. And the shuttles are even wildly erratic during the semester. Oh, so they so are. You That's don't great. really want to test the game. Good job, the Kev. Okay. <laughs> so Kasarian, you may be our like um unofficial Eden Hall, you know, we'll get the inside information from you. You would agree about the about the beds then? I think I saw you nodding. Yeah, they're not super comfortable, um, yeah. but it is beautiful up there, and the facilities are very nice and very clean. Mm-hmm. Um, also, as a side, I guess la- the laundry situation would be the same. We have to bring our own laundry detergent. You do, but it's free. You can use the, there is a laundry facility in the dorm, and it is free for you to use, so just bring your own soap. There's yeah. also, um, in each, in the dorms, on each floor, they usually put us, they usually sequester us in a wing or two wings, because um, there are students who live there during the summer, too. Not very many, but um, they, you know, we want to make sure we don't bother them. Um, but there are little lounge areas um, in each of the dorms, and there's a, a kitchenette area, so like a sink and um, usually like uh, refrigerators, they get a little touchy about us using their refrigerators. I'll just be honest. Um, but I may preempt that a little bit with some sweet talk up at res- residence life. Uh, if I can, um, I will tell you that there is a policy, uh, at Eden hall that you cannot have, um, alcoholic beverages in the common areas of the dorm. It's an undergraduate dorm. You understand. So even if you are of age, most of us, I imagine are probably of age, um, please keep that in mind. You can, um, you can certainly, uh, do what you like in your dorm rooms. Um, and there will be, um, there will have a couple of, uh, of events at the, uh, program sponsored events that will have some wine and some beer at them for those of us who are of age, but I will ask everyone, no, I will require everyone, uh, to keep, keep in mind that while we are there, it is a course. It is, you are there as you know, Chatham students. Um, so just behave accordingly. That's all I'll say. I think you know where I'm going. Amber. Is there like a curfew, like a time we need to be back in the dorms if we're staying in the dorms? There's a, I think there's quiet hours that start in the dorms at 10, maybe. Um, um, but they don't enforce that. Um, you know, you, we just quietly slip around in the dark. There's, it's very quiet up there. There's very few, there are very few people up there. I also need to, to be very um, clear with all of you um, that as at least last year, and I assume this has not changed, there is no um, public safety specifically positioned at Eden Hall, which I don't love. I'm just, I'll just be honest with you. I don't love that. Um, I think it's I think it's, I don't know what I think it is, <laughs> but um, if you, you know, if there was a emergency 
there's 911, there is me, there is the residence life director who lives up there as well. Um, but I just want to really be clear to make sure everybody is comfortable with that. Um, yeah, it's kind of bizarre, but I'm not really talking it up. I'm really selling it, huh? <laughs> no booze and there are no cops. Okay. Did they remove the private security they hired two years ago? They did, Kasarian. I think they did. Yeah, eyeballs, me too. Okay. Um, what else we got in here? Yes, Joe, leave the beer pong down at home. <laughs> um, Joe, Joe Manuelson, I'm just going to pick on you for a minute because you just wrote in the chat, this is going to be such a nice break. Why do you think so? Well, my son is turning four. That's why. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be really like, I'll have the whole, like, I, oh, I'm so sorry. I have to go and I'll be there. Like I have to leave at seven every day because I have to be at breakfast and do my free writing. So guess I'll just see you guys. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And then I don't know what happened. I ended up staying here till 11 to, to write with people. It was so crazy. So I'm yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it probably won't be exactly like that, but I'll, I'll, I'll appreciate having this the whole day and not just a few hours I get mm -hmm. at school. So, yeah, for those of you who don't have children that you're running away from, <laughs> um, I every year I hear students say that they've never had, they've never been given the opportunity or the permission to do nothing but write for such a long time for this very focused amount of time. Um, so it is really special for that reason um, alone and for so many other reasons too. Um, obviously I'm a big fan of it. So I, <laughs> I will stop, um, stop my, my sales pitch and, uh, and ask, it is beautiful, super clear. Air. Oh, the, you can see stars actually at night. And like I said before, and, and the, the sky is really bigger somehow in Gibsonia than, than it is here in Pittsburgh. It's beautiful. There's a, there was a white deer there a couple of years ago that students like tried to find and it was felt very magical. I don't know. Um, it is kind of, I don't use that. It's a little woo woo that word, right? But, um, but it is kind of, it is kind of a magical time. What's the policy on bringing cookies? Cookies are very welcome. We have lots of cookies at Eaton Hall. We eat them every afternoon with our with our coffee. <laughs> um, but Joe, if you'd like to bake, feel free to to do that and um, regale us with your with your baked goods. Um, yes, website um, is Joe just put that into the chat. Um, we have a great website. Uh, it's it is being updated now, but you can certainly go there and get a sense of what we have done in the past. I'm really proud of what we've done in the past. Um, of what we've, the people that we've brought um, and the kind of program that we've done. Um, so I try to make this, you know, good for you. I try to make this relevant to you. And um, it's a good, I think I try to make it a good mix of something that's very academic with something that is more, you know, sort of like a professional. This is what it'll feel like to go to a, a writing residency. Um, and there are a bunch of pictures, yes, on the website from years past. Let's see, Brecken, any questions from you? I mean, putting yeah, on the spot. I'm just trying to write. Okay, so if the workshops are poetry and creative nonfiction and fiction, and so does that mean that we are like going to be writing everything, or is it like I'm just going to be writing poetry? I I I don't. I think what it, it will mean that you'll be writing in your genre. So okay. um, I've I I chose these two faculty members with you all in mind, knowing that we would need to have multi-genre classes because of the breakdown of the student body. Um, and they are both, um, uh, you know, published in, bo in, the, in the both genres, um, in Aria's case, in all three. Um, so I will be working with the faculty between now and June to help them create the course that they're going to make. So understand that you will not all be doing this. It's not like a, a carbon copy of each other. You'll be having two different classes. It would be like taking a class with me or Dr. McNair, right? We have different teaching styles. We have different um, ways to approach things. So what you can count on though, is that your workshop will be very generative. You'll be writing a lot of pages. That is one thing that I really um, emphasize with our visitors that it is a time for you to create a lot. Um, so it's not going to be like a lecture-based class, though your certainly your workshop professors will have, you know, to impart wisdom and, and teaching to you. Um, and you will be sharing work with your peers, whether it will be exactly like 
a traditional workshop um, like you would have on campus during the year or not. Um, that depends on the workshop leader, but, um, but those two things you can be sure of. You will be writing a lot and you will get to share your work with, the, with readers, okay? Got it, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Sarah, has, uh, has a question? Okay, good. Yeah, I was just curious, so like, is there gonna be any separation between undergraduate and graduate or we're just all gonna be mixing and mingling? Thank you for asking that question, which I meant to talk about. No, you will not be separated. You will be in the same workshops. Um, undergraduates of Finley and Kazarian are both, you know, they both taken the creative writing classes, uh, like pretty much everything that Chatham has to offer. Um, and uh, are, you're super welcome here. We know that you can, um, you know, rise to the occasion. What I, one of the things I really like about, about SCW is that there are full res students present who are, you know, graduate students who have been in classrooms for two years, sometimes taking classes in workshop. There are low res students who have not done that yet. Um, and for some of you, it might be your first time in a in a face to face on ground workshop. But you have the the, the the benefit of really knowing because you work one on one with faculty members really closely on your work. So you bring those skills into that space. Um, so it's really nice when um, the full res and the low res students can kind of um, you know cross pollinate and help each other um, with the their various you know, strengths. And, and, and our undergraduates do the same. Um, you have a, you come in with a, a different perspective as well. Um, fresh eyes, fresh voices. Sometimes we're a little sick of each other in the MFA program. So it's always nice to, um, I don't mean that really. I'm, I'm assuming that's how you feel. Cause that's how I felt about my MFA cohort back in a million years ago. But um, yeah, it's just, an, it's, everybody is, is, is equal in that space. Um, and if we had alums, they might be with you too. And if we had community members, they might be with us and someday they may again. And one more thing. So mm -hmm. when we choose our um, genre specialization, are mm -hmm. we looking for refinement or learning? Because like, right, like I write poetry yeah. and fiction, but I haven't really taken a creative nonfiction class. Is this a place where I would take a creative nonfiction? Or this is a great writing? question for, and this, the answer I'm giving is only for the undergraduates. Um, and actually maybe Kassarian, it's only for you because you're not an IDP student, correct? No. I'm okay, not. so that means that you get to pick whatever you feel like doing because you're just looking for three credits to that will go towards your undergraduate transcript, right? For Finley, it's a little different, and for all the MFA students, because Finley is going is is in the five year program, which will mean that Finley will be with us in graduate classes in the fall, um, and so you will probably want to stick close to your main genre. Um, those of you who are in between your first and second year, um, I think that's all of you. Um, for full res students, this may be a time when you work, when you develop ideas towards your thesis or you even write towards your thesis. So um, it would be lovely if, if you had time in the program to be like, I'd really love just to take poetry at SCW. Probably you don't wanna do that unless you are, um, you know, unless you're taking it as a, as a 709 student for elective credit. But if anybody has any questions about that, um, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it later. Um, and as I said before, for the nonfiction folks, I, I'll just have to check in with you as after everybody gets registered and just see where we are. If you are, if you have extremely strong feelings about which workshop you, you are placed in, you please just contact me and we'll talk it through, okay? Okay. Anything else, you guys? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's, oh, bring bug spray <laughs> and sunscreen because <laughs> um, it gets hot and buggy up there. Although we used to do SCW, actually the first SCW I ever did was the end of July into August. And that was too, it was too, too late, too much, too hot. And then we did it in, in sort of the, the beginning of, or the middle part of, of July for a long time. And last year we moved to doing it in June and I don't think we'll ever not do it in June again because June is just a, just a lovely, it's much, the temperature is nicer and it's blooming things up there and butterflies and stuff. So, okay. Thank you all for spending the time. Um, Joe is gonna send this out. So if you feel like you wanna <laughs> replay it and listen to me again, you can do that. 
Um, and uh, in the meantime, make sure you're registered. And I will be sending out, the next thing you'll hear from me is the question about your housing and which, which housing thing you're going to choose. And that's it for now. Um, hey, Finley, wait, yes, real, you can stay and talk with me. Real quick, I yes, found something sure. out. I tried to, maybe it's just for undergrads, but maybe this is good for the recording. I found out, I tried to register earlier today. There's a prerequisite yes. requirement that Dr. Tippin is probably already Yes, talked I about. talked to Dr. Tippin and Dr. Kingsbury about this. All we need to do is do a, a waiver for you. Um, the problem is that the, 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 the requirement course is not offered anymore. So we just have to get that off the books. It's just paperwork. So um, just talk to Dr. Tippin and she can help you with that. Okay. All right, gang. Thanks so much. And uh, I'll see you around the Lindsay house or Bye, the thank Zoom you. screen or whatever. Finley, thank see you. you around, okay?